It's been a year since homegrown pharmaceutical and consumer health company Mankind Pharma debuted on the stock exchanges. The company, which derives over 90% of its sales from India, raised around 4,300 crores during its IPO, has seen its stock rally over 90% from its issue price of around 1,080 and generated positive returns in 9 out of 12 months since listing. While overall market gains have been supportive, analysts attribute the company's success to its strong fundamentals. Since its inception in Uttar Pradesh over 25 years ago, Mankind Pharma has positioned itself as a market disruptor, particularly in key metrics such as pricing. Initially focusing on Tier 2 to Tier 4 and rural markets, Mankind Pharma has grown to become the fourth largest player in the Indian pharma market in terms of domestic sales, garnering over 50% of sales from metros and Tier 1 cities. It's been the leader in prescription drugs for the last seven years and boasts of one of the largest doctor coverages with over 5 lakh doctors. It's extensive distribution network includes a field force of 16,000. Mankind Pharma's consumer health division includes well-known brands such as Manforce Condoms, Prega News, Unwanted 72 and Acne Star, which are market leaders in their categories. So what is Mankind Pharma's path going forward? What is the company's revenue target now that it's crossed the milestone of around 10,000 crores in FY24? What is the company's inorganic plans considering it has an enabling resolution to raise around 7,500 crores? And what are the key challenges as the company looks to increase market share in the chronic segment, tier one markets and exports? To discuss these prospects, we have Rajiv Janeja joining us for an exclusive conversation. Mr. Janeja, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ekta. Thank you so much for inviting me here. It's uh, being long. Yes, absolutely. It's been a long time. Um, well, you know, I wanted to start by asking you about um, the journey in the past one year. The company debuted uh, a year ago. The stock has rallied over 90%. It's rewarded shareholders. What have been the key learnings for the company? Number of learnings are there. Number one is that uh, we have become more responsible. We were always responsible because uh, in the board of mankind, two equity partners were there. So as far as the compliances were concerned and financial discipline was concerned, it was always there. But naturally, once you become uh, responsible to large number of shareholders, you think in a different manner. You become a bit more cautious that uh, the kind of faith these people have put on us, we should carry on this. We should not disappoint them. One is this. The second basically is that uh, in last one year time, we have become uh, 100 biggest company of India, uh, top 100 companies of India. That's amazing kind of responsibility. It's very humbling. We never expected this would happen. Uh, these are certain things which have basically happened. Uh, one thing we have always uh, made sure in our head that uh, whatever we do, we should not see the share price we should do right things for long term. Uh, because uh, everybody who's ever put any kind of a faith in mankind is on the basis of uh, the kind of trust, the kind of uh, values mankind has got, uh, is this. Many new things have happened in mankind. Uh, one that uh, from chronic to uh, very specialist chronic, we have come in. Like for example, uh, this year, uh, Nobiglar, which we launched our insulin, is the top launch of the industry, number one launch of the industry. This is one. The second I can say is that uh, after Naptas, one more company has given us in licensed product, uh, Symbicord from AstraZeneca, uh, which is considered to be one of the best in the world as far as the inhaler devices are concerned, one of the best. Mankind is the only company in the world which has got this to promote on the same name. So you go to you go to any place, you'll find Snowbiglar is available everywhere, US or UK. Or okay. Europe. All right. Uh, but Mr. Janeja, you know, before we get into the details of the business, I wanted to just understand the fundraising part which you have approved in your board meet that <clears throat> just went by. You've taken an enabling resolution to raise around 7,500 crores. You've increased your borrowing limit in the company as well. Is the company ready for an acquisition? See, I mean, uh, Mankind has always talked about this, that uh, we are always would be working towards making sure that company is uh, having bigger market share and uh, sh bigger share in chronic side. We'll always try to go for consumer side. We'll always uh, have talked about that anything which is there for entry barrier, uh, 
uh, will go for it. In the past, we have seen many things and we have rejected many things. We have seen big and small in last couple of years. Look at the history of uh, mankind. Uh, two products from Doctors Ready. Uh, one is Teddy, ba uh, Daffy, and the second basically is Combi Hale. One is Panacea. Again, when we took Panacea, we saw that it should have uh, entry barrier products. It should have patent product. It should have chronic side. We have done that. So as far as the financial discipline is concerned or certain things are there where uh, our conservative kind of a nature uh, come forward, we're always there because you cannot change your nature. So <clears throat> it's just re making uh, ready yourself. Uh, once you become an IPO company, you learn a lot of things from other companies as well. Our peers do the same thing. If in the past uh, we had this 10,500 crore rupees kind of uh, instrument, now we have added uh, 12,500 because uh, you're always in the market. And it is not that every day you get some opportunity. Uh, once in a while, you get an opportunity. It's making yourself just ready, uh, nothing in haste, nothing aggressive, nothing which will uh, uh, ensure that our EBITDA goes down. We'll always think anything which can add value to mankind. It should be most important, EBITDA accretive. The company's EBITDA, whichever company, uh, should be bigger than ours EBITDA. All right. These, but these are certain these are certain precautions you make. These are certain things you learn from the market and you go ahead with those. All right, fair enough. Uh, so it's an enabling resolution. But could you clarify for us on whether the company is exploring advent stake in BSV? I cannot I mean, uh, talk about this because a lot of speculation is there. You understand how uh, these things really happen in the market. Uh, number of reports starts coming without uh, any kind of a solid uh, reasons and things are there. I cannot uh, accept or deny. These are all speculative. Once something solid will happen, let's talk about that. But again, I want to reiterate, we'll always be uh, thinking from the point of view of mankind. Uh, will it be a beta accretive? Will it be adding some entry barrier products? Will it add some kind of a consumer side products? Anything. I'm not talking about, uh, because in the past, many things came to us. Uh, many things are still there in the market. Uh, but we have never uh, been speculative. We have never been, I mean, uh, over aggressive. We've always been conservative because you cannot change your basic nature. You have some basic nature. You, you cannot change that. All right. But the valuation, let me put it the other way, uh, while you haven't accepted and denied whether or not you are interested in advent stake in BSV, uh, the valuation is pegged at $2 billion for 100% stake. Uh, would that uh, size of an acquisition be something that mankind is looking at? Absolutely not. I mean, it, it, it is too much. I mean, if somebody says $3 billion or $2 billion, $2 billion have how many zeros, we know it very well. Uh, how how we build this mankind, we know it very well. So we, I mean, we have a kind of a philosophy. We are organically uh, build up company. We we'll never go very speculative. Any any speculation is not right for us. At any given time, we know our strengths. We know our weaknesses. We know where what we can do. Sure. So I mean, whatever uh, something comes in a newspaper, is just a speculation. All right. Well, the other report which actually was circulating is Healthium Medtech. Uh, that uh, is, in fact, a surgical suture staples company. So it's away from what, uh, you know, mankind traditionally does. That valuation was around $1 billion. Would you like to clarify whether you were in the market for that? I mean, yes, uh, I can say that we were there, but we did not go for that. Again, look at that. Uh, so once we find that uh, the valuation was too high, we say, no, we'll not go for that. I mean, it was not uh, for our thing. Okay, all right. But would you look to diversify into a completely different segment, such as medical devices? No, madam, I mean, anything which basically has some kind of entry barrier, something, just remember three things, uh, rather four things. Yeah, you, you'll meet me after five years, we'll just doing the same things. Entry barrier, is one, chronic side is one, consumer side is third, and fourth basically is EBITDA accretive. If no, no. We are very firm on these four things. We remember it always. 
anytime we are looking at any entity, our thought is only one. It should have these four things. If no, we say no. You have over 3,200 crores of cash on books right now. What is the utilization plan then? Once we have the money, I mean, uh, we, it is not for the dividend. It is uh, there to really, I mean, put the money at the right place. So we always think, uh, how can we just add uh, some kind of a value to mankind and mankind shareholders? How can we deploy that funds? Uh, so that's one reason. I mean, uh, and in, when, you, when you go for shopping, it's not a shopping mall. You go and you see everything is there. And you can, uh, once in a while, something comes. Once in a while. So we look around. But it does not mean we are in a hurry to spend our money. It's, it is hard on money. You just keep it as it is. Uh, if something something nice would come, uh, again, four things I take it again. Abbey Diacritive, Entry Barrier, Economic Side, Consumer Side, all right. Otherwise, no. All right. Okay. All right. That point is taken. Uh, you know, in the past one year, and uh, I think it was just a couple of months ago that we had the promoters sell around 1.6% stake in the company for around 13, 30 crores. Uh, what was the reason and any kind of further uh, pair down from the promoters? See, the point basically is what we are very aggressive company. Once we decide something, speed is everything for mankind. We were supposed to come below 75%. And that's one reason we came to below 75%. Why to wait? So any further selling expected? No, madam. Okay. No, All right. no. Let's move on to the chronic segment now. You know, uh, you've expanded quite significantly there. Your market sh share stands at around over 35%. Um, and uh, you've expanded around 160 basis points in Q4. What makes that segment so attractive how much do you want to increase your share when it comes to chronic drugs in India? From the last five years, we're talking about what that uh, we will increase our chronic share to a substantial level. Five years back, it was 28%. This year, last this year means we have closed a year, it is 36%. Uh, in just one year time, we have increased 200 basis point approximately. It was 34 point something, now it is 36%. Uh, our every action, everything is uh, towards chronic site. And our ambition is uh, like any other peer, uh, good companies we, 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 we take a lot of uh, inspiration from. We aspire to become like them. Uh, talk about these top three, four companies. We want to have more than 40% uh, in near future, our chronic share of sales, more than 50% in long-term future, that's the ambition for mankind uh, because we have learned once you go in chronic site, many advantages are there. One, the sales become consistent. You're not depending upon seasonality. Second, it is always uh, increases your EBITDA. Uh, profitability is more. You can do many things uh, once you have more money in your hand. And we have done that. Look at uh, acquisition of uh, uh, this uh, Combi Hale. We never had any kind of a device, so we went for it. Again, Simbi caught in license. This is a journey of last two years. It took us two years to convince uh, Astra to give us this product in license. And uh, I promise you, we'll surprise everybody. Uh, again, you see this uh, Nobiclar. Insulin is in chronic, very chronic. It's uh, super specialist chronic. Again, it is... Uh, product of the year launch this year. That really talks about uh, what we talk, we do. If we say that uh, we'll do that, we generally have done it, and rather we have done more than that. Okay, are we gonna see more in licensing deals that you're going to uh, undertake with larger MNCs? Yeah, one more uh, in license deal uh, we have signed at the right time, we'll just inform you. Maybe in the first, uh, second quarter we'll inform you. Things are done. Once we launch the product, we're quite conservative. We don't really speak something uh, till we get the product in our hand. We, we, are, we are kind of a believer of once something is done 100%, then speak out. Okay. Uh, well, you know, uh, Mr. Janeja, now moving away from the domestic business, which actually is the mainstay of your business, let's talk about your consumer healthcare segment, which actually is more top of mind for consumers with all of the brands that you have. 
but it's only grown around 2% in FY24. You've men mentioned that it was because of multiple transformations. But what is there any kind of real sluggishness in terms of demand and sales on the ground when it comes to the consumer healthcare business? And what are you guiding for in FY25? Let me explain the philosophy of mankind. Uh, we basically work on a very strong foundation. We are not worried about much of the results because our belief is strong foundations, right people, right strategies will yield fantastic response. We have always done that. Earlier, our consumer division was being run by a divisional head who was doing pharma and consumer. So there was a flavor of pharma and consumer in our consumer division. And that's one reason a lot of things which are not right for consumer side were happening. So number one, what we have done, stockist optimization we have done. Second, we have brought a lot of technology in it. And you see our confidence, the kind of belief we have got uh, that we are carving out consumer division and making it a second division, I mean, next, next division. So that next time onwards, very soon, you will see that division separately. That's our confidence in our consumer side. On one side, you find that uh, primary sale is, sale is a bit muted, but on secondary sales, it is doing very good. As far as the forecasting is concerned, it will have the same kind of a growth which, which we have always had in the past. Things are cleaned up, things are done. Uh, there's never a pressure on mankind to deliver results without having a very solid foundation. We always believe if something is not right, come forward, clean it up and uh, go for it. All right. We have done like this one. But are you looking to probably uh, rope in another investor, possible separate listing of the consumer healthcare business eventually? Not, not, not really. This thought has not crossed us. Okay, all right. Crossed so over mind, yeah. Carving it out into a separately wholly owned subsidiary is only to sharpen focus. Uh, the other point of the business was the exports, which has stood out, uh, you know, quite dramatically. It was up 230% in Q4, up 175% for the year. It's a low base, but uh, how big an opportunity is exports for the company? What's your strategy there? Are you going to be a US generics player? Absolutely not, madam. Uh, we have mentioned a number of times, Ekta, that. Uh, we will always be domestic focused company. We have learned our lessons from other people's mistake. Uh, whenever we think of export, three, four things are there. Uh, it should have, if we have some kind of a complex product, difficult to make product, product with entry barrier, which can, where we can command uh, fantastic growth uh, and fantastic profits, we'll go for it. If it's just a me too product and it would add some kind of a sales in our revenue, not interested at all. We will always be uh, India focused because look around yourself, the kind of vibrancy is there in India. We are very, very bullish for India. Anything and everything we do, keeping India in mind. Okay. All right. But uh, how much are you expecting exports to grow? Because we do understand there are some one off opportunities and you are looking at the ophthalmology space there. So give us a sense, at least in the near term, what is the growth rate for the exports business? <clears throat> There would always be double-digit growth. I mean, uh, the kind of growth you have seen, uh, we don't predict that, but there would be nice growth. And uh, if one of opportunities, I cannot predict about that, how long it will remain with us. Uh, but whatever uh, things are there to uh, take the profits, we can take that. But our focus is always domestic side, uh, consumer side, chronic side, not export side. So 90% plus, but we will always be uh, India focused company. Just to narrow down about India and maybe the risks there, what are the policy risks that you probably see with the new government formed? Uh, you know, do you see possibly more threat from trade gen generics, a uh, reduction in uh, prices? I mean, every time uh, and any time in future, some kind of a challenges would always be there. There's nothing which uh, any, any industry is there where you will not find the resistance. The point basically is what, how proactive are you? How you are thinking, how can you, when, when we talk about entry barriers, higher entry barriers, we talk, we, we keep that in mind. We're quite cognizant to everything happening around us. When you talk about the chronic side, when you talk about the in licensed products, when you talk about the consumer side, these are the entry barriers. And when we talk about this consumer side, uh, I didn't mention, we are now, uh, after a long period, in the process of launching few more products. 
aggressively. We feel that uh, they would be our next big gems. So uh, there's no business where uh, some challenges are not there, uh, but how you convert those into opportunities, that's your call. Okay. Well, and, 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 and then just look, look in the past. In five years' time, five years back, we were just half. Every five years, I mean, last in last five years' time, uh, despite of all the headwinds, all the problems, our sales have doubled up. We are more than 10,000 plus growth company now. Absolutely. I'm going to get to your larger vision in just a bit. But before that, uh, margins. You've guided that margin should be between 25 to 26 percent. But is there any room for upside, say, for example, from the chronic portfolio, new launches, exports? Ekta, we are like just, just like you only. I, mean, I remember very well that uh, we always underplay ourselves. We have always underplay, uh, right? Remember when we said 24 to 20, 26 percent, when we said that uh, this would be our valuation, when we said this would be, we will be able to do that. We always try to underplay. That's our philosophy. We are quite conservative. What uh, we can really, when we promise something, uh, it's a commitment. So we will not. We'll say just 25 to 26 percent, and we'll always be growth focused company. Always be growth focused. And when we when we say that uh, 25, 26, our uh, focus is always towards the growth side. Okay, so you're looking to under promise and over deliver. Is that it? That's a learning from uh, a lot of people, actually. <laughs> okay, well, you know, talking about people, I can see at the back uh, that you have a whole host of leaders on your wall at this point. Uh, Mr. Janeja, leave us with a larger picture for mankind. Uh, where do you expect the company to go? Like you mentioned, it's crossed that 10,000 crore mark in terms of revenues. Your margin guidance is 25 to 26%. You manage to catapult yourself every five years. Five years hence, what is the story of mankind? I can first talk about our intangible side because uh, that these are our dreams, actually. We want to become something like Tata's, uh, where values and culture is the most important. People are very happy. People are very inspired. They respect mankind. In, I mean, I'm talking about mankindians. Once company is happy and charged up from inside, outside people see the results. That's the intangible side. We want to become some kind of an institution uh, that uh, when we go away, because uh, we all have, we are, have a certain period in our life, uh, this mankind should stay for certain values that it happens in Tata's. As far as the tangible side is concerned, uh, we feel that we are confident enough, we are destined to be leader in every sense. Wherever we go, we always think about leadership, uh, whether it is prescription-wise, whether uh, we are number one, we are fourth largest company, Few months we are third largest, few months we are fourth largest. It's a matter of time only. In consumer side, you look at any brand, we always work for the leadership side. So that is that thought is always there. If in 95, when we crossed five crore rupee sales, the thought was 50. When we did 50, thought was 500. When we did 500, thought was 5,000. And when we reached 5,000, thought was 50,000. That's a tangible side. That's a dream. We always think impossible dreams because dreams should be impossible only. Okay, all right, Mr. Janeja. Well, we wish you a lot of luck to get and achieve those dreams. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much uh, for joining in and speaking with CNBC TV. Ekta, always, always pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.